in the past few days, I realized that every time I build a new FastAPI application, I end up using the same structure and the same patterns over and over again. For this reason, I decided to build this complete, clean, and reusable FastAPI boilerplate, and today we're going to build it entirely from scratch. This is not just a quick demo, but it's a solid production-ready backend setup that you can use for your own projects. Alongside FastAPI, we'll be using UV, a newer and much faster Python package manager that I now prefer over PIP, um, PostgreSQL and Docker for our development environment, and Alembic to handle our database migrations. Before we dive into the code, let me quickly show you what we're going to build today. It's a complete CRUD application for managing to-dos with interactive and auto-generated documentation. You'll be able to create, update, delete, and read to-dos with proper validation and error handling included. If you want to use this boilerplate for your own projects, you will find the GitHub repo linked in the description. This readme will walk you through getting this boilerplate up and running, both on your local machine and in a Docker environment. Before start, make sure you have Docker Desktop up and running and UV locally installed on your machine. If you don't have UV installed yet, it's super easy. Just check the documentation or just search for a quick YouTube tutorial. Now open your terminal. Let's create a new folder. I call it FastAPI boilerplate. Change directory inside this new folder. FastAPI boilerplate and open your IDE. I have my cursor here, so I open a new terminal and initialize our project with UV. So UV init, okay. Then I install our dependencies. Now let's create a .env file at the root of the project and paste the database credentials for our PostgreSQL database. If you want to test it locally, just change this DB to localhost and it will work on your machine. We'll test it on, on Docker, so I change it to DB. Don't forget to add the .env file inside your .gitignore to avoid the leak of sensitive data, like that. And now let's create a new folder called app and move your main.py file inside this new folder. Inside the app folder, let's create a clean structure with the following subfolders. So we have controllers, we have DB, we have routes, we have models, and we have schemas. This structure keeps our project organized and super efficient. Now, before we start writing down our application, let's set up Docker to use our PostgreSQL database without having to install it. First of all, let's create a Docker file at the root of the project. This Docker file uses this Python version, installs UV, and sets up our FastAPI application. And now let's create a docker compose.yaml file just to orchestrate our services. This docker compose file sets up two services. Our API service is just our FastAPI application and our PostgreSQL database. This depends on makes sure that our database starts running before our FastAPI application. And now we have basically everything we need to run this project in a dockerized environment. Let's also create a .docker-ignore file. Okay. And now let's quickly test our Docker setup before we continue with the code. So docker compose up build. Perfect, the database image was successfully built. And for the API service, we get this error attribute app not found in module app.main because inside our main.py file, we don't have defined any app actually. So let's start with the database connection first. So inside the subfolder db, let's create a new init.py file that must be empty and a new file called db.py. Inside db.py, we define the connection to our database. Now let's create our database model. So inside 
our models folder. Let's create an empty init.py file, init.py file, and another file called to do.py. And this will be our model for, for the project. A to do as an ID, as a title, a description, a completed, which is a Boolean, are created at and updated at. Nice. Now let's create our parenting schemas for request response validation. So again, inside the schema subfolder, let's create a new init.py file and a to do.py file. These schemas define exactly what data we expect and what data we'll send back. Now let's create our business logic. So inside the controller subfolder, let's create again our empty init.py file and another file called to do.py. This is where we handle all our database operations like get to do's, create to do, update to do, and delete to do. And finally, let's create our API routes. So inside the route subfolder, let's create again the new file init.py and file to do.py. Here we have all our CRUD endpoints with proper HTTP status and error handling. Just see how the business logic is just delegated to the controllers. So this makes this code pretty, pretty straightforward. And now let's finally update our main.py file. Before that, make sure you create a new init.py file inside the app folder. Now inside our main.py file, we define our first API application and we just include the router we defined inside the routes folder. Perfect. Now we have a complete FastAPI application with a clean structure, but we are not done yet. Let's add Alembic migrations to our database. First, I open a new terminal and let's initialize Alembic for our project. So Alembic init Alembic. We see that a new Alembic folder was created here. And now we need to configure Alembic to work with our database. Open the alembic.ini file and just comment this part of the code because we'll define our database connection string inside the .env, sorry, env.py file. Inside this file, we have to import our models. In this case, we just have one model. So from app.models.to do, okay, import to do. And now let's define our database connection string. So we have to import OS to read the database URL environment variable, but we have to define this part of code after the config part. So I think we're good to go now. Now let's kill the Docker container and force it and rebuild the application. Okay, everything is working fine. So inside a new terminal, we have to create our first migration. So with this command, we create this create to do stable migrations. Let's confirm that. Okay, I got this error because maybe this one has to be inside here and this target metadata will be base.metadata and this base must be imported from app. Okay, like that. Let's do it again. Docker compose down okay let's open a new terminal and let's create our first migration so like that okay okay we can see that this is our 
new migration file and now let's apply this migration with this command okay perfect our database has now the to do table uh, with all the proper columns and constraints great our application is now running and just let's test it so let's open our browser and go to localhost 8000 localhost 8000 slash docs and beautiful we have our application with auto generated documentation and just test our endpoints so let's create a new a new to do let's try it out title um go for groceries maybe like this uh, description to apples eggs and oat milk let's execute the code we get this 200 response with our id our title go for groceries description completed is false created that and updated that beautiful so if i copy this id and i want to test maybe the update one let's okay update to do try it out description paste our id i want to set the completed to true execute this code we get the trend response and now our to do is completed we can get our to do so let's just try it out this one okay we just have one to do and if i copy again this id i want to get the specific to do so not this one but this one okay try it out to do paste execute and beautiful everything everything is working and just test the delete one so okay okay delete try it out to do id paste our id execute and beautiful we get the message to do deleted successfully and that's it in just a few minutes we've built a complete production ready fast api boilerplate application with fast api clean architecture modern python tooling with uv docker for containerization auto generated documentation and migrations with alembic the complete code is available on github the link is in the description and if this helped you in some way smash the like button and subscribe to the channel see you in the next one